Bamboro is a business uh, registered under the company laws of Botswana, regulated by uh, Mines and Paris Act. We are situated in Maporo village, 20 kilometers uh, to Palabe uh, from Khabaroni. We have been existing for the past 30 years. Uh, we, we do have 330 employees uh, where we work. Uh, we have two shifts uh, during the day and we have another a night shift as well. We distribute our, our, our products uh, to South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia and Namibia. Uh, our vision as Makoro for the next uh, five years is to be able to meet our demand. That is why we are running another expansion, a 300 million expansion, which would want to double up the, 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 the production capacity that we, we, we currently do. Currently we are running at uh, 4.5 million bricks per month, in a full month, and of uh, 50 to 60 percent is export. We do have a product range of our face brick, uh, and water storage tanks uh, with uh, drinking traps for the cattle and flower pots from our Makoro tank technologies. It all begins here. This is what is called open cast mining. The mining is done in layers called benches. As you can see, the layers are staggered in what looks like steps. This type of mining is done for safety reasons, so the mine doesn't collapse or cave in. The red soil is called topsoil. The topsoil is put aside for rehabilitation. This means that when the mine has reached its expiry, the topsoil is then used to cover up the mine so that a gaping hole is not left. The excavator machine picks up the layers from the quarry and loads them onto the dump trucks. There are two plants at Mogoro Bricks. This is the crushing plant which crushes the raw materials and making plant where the bricks are made. Below the topsoil are the four different types of clay that are used for the bricks. At Makoro, there is a unique type of lingo used to differentiate the layers of clay. These layers are named according to the various colors. The layers being clip, bulldoze, yellow and pink. The bulldoze is at the very bottom. This is a very hard layer that only a bulldozer can penetrate, hence the name. From the hopper, it will follow into what is called a jaw crusher. As the stern goes down, the jaw crusher will break it into tiny pieces. The stern starts at a density of 300 milliliters. The crusher will break it down to 50 milliliters. The powder will then fall onto a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt feeds the sand into what is called Inkler plan. The Inkler pan will mill the clay further. As you can see here, the Inkler pan has a plate at the bottom with a wheel that turns the clay. The fine material falls through a sieve which will only allow clay of 6 mm or finer to pass through it. It will then go onto another belt and into two streams into a multi-deck sieve which sakes the material vigorously. All the fine material falls through to another belt and goes into the making plant. The coarse material which doesn't make it through the screens will be redirected to the Stedman machine for further crushing and returned back to the screen. Only the finest material will fall through the screens for brick making. The final material then goes into storage ready for brick making at about 10% moisture. 
the material gets loaded with a loader and goes into another hopper which goes round the belt. Sometimes coal from the silo is added here to make the color appear on the face of the brick. The mixer turns and mixes the clay and the water together. The mixed product then goes into another mixer and then into a vacuum chamber. All the air is sucked out of the clay at this point. The clay then comes into this machine in a circular motion and gets forced through these three rods to form the holes in the bricks. Eleven thousand bricks per hour are produced with this machine. This sausage looking product, called the slug, then goes into the slug cutter which will cut the product to belt size of 18 bricks long. The pusher will then push the cut slug through another cutter called the push through cutter. The product then goes through a turntable and into a setting machine. Interestingly, clay brick making is very environmentally friendly. If there are any damaged bricks, they get crushed and recycled so there's very little waste. After setting, the product then goes onto this pallet table and then the bricks are manually packed onto these pallets ready for collection by the forklift. The forklift then takes the product into the packing machine. All it's doing is taking the bricks off the steel pallet and packing it onto the car. The car then moves out and back to the making plant leaving only the bricks behind. The transfer car will then move the bricks onto these three tracks. From here, the bricks then go into kiln wagons. The kiln wagons first take the bricks through tunnel dryers. The wagon then goes into a tunnel kiln. There are two dryers and two kilns. There is a 42-hour cycle to ensure the product is sufficiently baked. Let's get into the control room to see the baking process. This is the control room. This is where the temperatures for the dryers and the kilns are controlled. The product gets monitored as it travels through the dryer through this kiln. All the fuel used to burn the bricks is from burning coal, which is received from Murupule. That's the only raw material imported here for brick making. In this particular process, the bricks go into the kiln for the dryer at 130 degrees. The temperature in each kiln reaches a whopping 1,120 degrees. The bricks are then sorted manually according to their respective colors. This is the highest labor process. The product is packed to what is called a cube and then strapped with the strapping belt. The forklift will then lift each cube into the holding bay.
The whole day's production will get put here. The next morning, all products are inspected to ensure that the product goes into the right bins and is the right classification. A normal truck can take 120,000 individual bricks. Makoro currently supplies to Namibia, South Africa, Zambia and Botswana. Only the surplus product is supplied to the SADC region.